So, this is our student technology all-stars meeting, the first of hopefully many to come. We'll probably do it on an annual basis, so if you, know any, if you have any other amazing kids, uh, maybe next year, or you know any kids in, the, in Colorado, they're more than welcome. Uh, schedule, already been through all that. Upcoming events, so I have a really cool, exciting announcement. Uh, October 11th, we're going to do a, a DevFest event up at the Google office in Boulder. You guys are special VIP welcome, or except you'll be in Italy. Mm -hmm. We'll see if we can get you a jet to come back. <laughs> um, so, and we just this week finally got in touch with the people at Sphero who are super busy recently. They make a robotic ball. Um, yeah. Uh, and Super going to be in the Star Wars movie in December, which is like, if there's, there's really nothing cooler, I don't think. Um, they made R2-D2's new friend. But they're going to they're gonna partner with Google Developer Group, Fort Collins, Denver, and Boulder in this dev fest that we're doing October 11th. So tell people there'll be a sign up soon. Um, so that'll be really fun. Uh, we have new meeting space potentially uh, under construction, which is pretty exciting. iTriage is overflowing into the building across the street. And they sent out one of those emails. It was like, hey, we get to build whatever we want. What do people want? And I said, hey, I always have people over. And it's like really cramped, invincible, which is the name of this room. And uh, it'd be awesome if we had some meeting space. So they designed this like bleacher system with a huge projection movie screen. So we can have like movie night and really uh, cool professional GDG meetings. Uh, and DevCon happened last week. Three of our members gave, speak, gave talks in Boston. Kelly gave an awesome talk. <laughs> I gave an okay talk. And uh, Dave Smith, who was last month's uh, presenter, also gave talks. Um, I'm, this is a new segment here. I call this Mark's Project of the Month. Um, I have this new scam, essentially, to get Starbucks money at 20% off. And so if you're interested, ask me later and I'll, I'll show you how to do it. It involves Bitcoin, so you know it's kind of shady. Um, but it, tol it totally works. I'm really <laughs> amazed by it. You can buy a $10 gift card for eight bucks, spend like $6, and then you get, just ask for your money back and you get $2 back. So it's pretty cool. It seems like it would be impossible, but it's not. And so thank you to our sponsors. iTriage hooked us up with the beer and the space and uh, Webroot help us pay for some things as well. If you want a free license to their, uh, um, what do they do? Antivirus uh, stuff, you can download it there. And uh, that's about it. So do you want to hook into the projector? Oh, yeah. Do you have a HDMI uh -huh. cable? Or do you need a display? You got this oh. adapter too. Yeah. Okay. Here, I'll set that up if you want to like clip that All to right. your. future skate park where he's from. Uh -huh. so we're going to hear a little bit about that. Alright, do you want me to wait for them to get back or? What's that? Should I wait for them to get back? I think, did they just take off? I don't know. I think they might just tie out. Alright. Are you, are you guys? I'll just start. Yeah. Okay. So this is basically just my SketchUp story and what I did with it. And so for 
Um, those that don't know, Google SketchUp is a 3D modeling software. It can be used to design anything from like a mechanical engineering standpoint or just anything you really want to design. And um, so that's just like a little GIF of the modeling process with SketchUp. And then, um, so this is just the beginning of my whole like SketchUp experience. Like my love for Google SketchUp and 3D design all began with my love for skateboarding. Like I would always, um, I would always skateboard uh, when I like, um, and so when I was littler, I'd always have my mom drive me to skate parks. And all the skate parks that I went to, I always just learned about some new design aspect. And um, when I learned about this new design aspects, I wanted to. Uh, somehow um, make my own design and I had nowhere to like store those designs that I had in mind and so that's how I got to um, SketchUp and um, so basically the whole reason I started SketchUp was from one little video that I watched on YouTube like it just said how to design a skateboard bowl with Google SketchUp and so I watched that and then immediately got the application and started to try to design my own. And um, so, well, that was one of my first um, designs that I tried to do. It's completely unrealistic. And, um, but I made it and yeah. And so my progress grew with SketchUp. Like I was always trying to get better at 3D modeling. I like I was always on my computer trying to learn new things and my mom was already always saying it was a waste of time <laughs> and so um, sooner or later I started designing things other than just skate parks and so like, I just started designing snowboard parks and um, basically like, other like uh, houses and appliances and stuff and my teacher, like, what well, I started doing it for school projects as well. And so my teacher um, found out, like, uh, he saw this, what I was doing. And so he hooked me up with uh, the Vail Park crew and to possibly get a job designing the snowboard park for the upcoming season. And so to, like, show them my experience and whatnot, I designed a replica of their park from the previous year and so I went into the interviews and um, and I, once I finished I didn't get the job but because probably because I was like 12 when I entered <laughs> and <laughs> but um but that just like showed me like what I could do with SketchUp and basically all that I could do in the future as well and so that's the design on the left of the snowboard park that I made for them from the previous year. And then on the right is a little coliseum I made for history class. And then um, 3D printing, that's just another one of the things that SketchUp has brought into my life. Like amazing thing really. It's just become such a big part of my life. And um, it all started with an eighth grade field trip with uh, one of my teachers scheduled a um, field trip for our Algebra 2 class to go to a 3D print shop um, right next to our school and so she promised that I could get one of my skate parks printed and so I obviously took her up on that and that's me with my little 3D printed skate park and once I got that printed I was really just hooked into 3D printing and so um, so I started volunteering at the Vail Library as a 3D printing coach. I would design and print things for whoever came in, like that's how I met you. And, um, and so after I did that for a while and got really into it, I convinced my parents to get me a 3D printer as well. That's my printer on the left. And then I realized that I really wanted to do more stuff with 3D printing. And so um, I I even did like stuff for my science fair, like I had created a new method for like 3D printing from like a 2D printer and um, and then I 
I started a business at my school as well, selling um, 3D printed objects for whoever wanted it. And uh, here are some of the prints I made. On the top left, that's a watch band for my dad. It's like custom design because he couldn't like buy it anywhere and his broke. And then bottom left, this is a little Yoda design that I printed. His right ear is broke off though. And then the top one, I printed that. That was one of the ones that I sold to um, one of the one of my classmates. It was like an Xbox faceplate. And then I printed Batarang. That's my skate park from before. And on the bottom middle, that's like a really recent print that I did. It's a little art case with all my art supplies. So it's like a little travel pack and a little screw to keep it tight. And then, um, so the present work that I've been doing, like since the five years that I've been working with Google SketchUp, I've worked with it just a lot. So I've gotten a lot better than what I've been doing before. And um, like more and more things just open up for me in like the 3D modeling realm. And I've been able to like design the 2015 Bill Snowboard Park. So I was able to get back to that and design that. And um, I designed a rock climbing gym for somebody. And I uh, taught classes at the Bill Library as well. And so here are some of the designs from that. Top left is design from this past year for the park that I designed. It wasn't 2015-16, it was 14-15. But, um, and then there's three more parks that I did as well. The bottom left is the original design I did for the Vail Park. And then the bottom right is the rock climbing gym that I designed for that, um, yeah. Oh, bottom right, I mean. And uh, so all that just led up to what I've been doing right now. I, um, I've been working with the Vail Skate Park to try to get a permanent skate park in the um, parking structure. It's just like a little 25 by like 225 foot space. And this is one of the other things that SketchUp has brought to me, like brought me this possibility. And um, like really, uh, this is just like one of my dreams that I've uh, wanted to do since I started designing skate parks and even since I just started riding skate parks. And um, so we, we all started off like me and this, um, my skate park committee as we called it. We took the idea to town council and then after a few months we actually got the skate park approved and it's going to get built in a few days. So I'm super excited about that. And that's about all I have. But just like Google SketchUp has like really helped me in so many ways that really either me or my mom who couldn't thought this was a waste of time really could have never imagined. So, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I have some questions. The, uh, you showed a picture of the skate park you designed and it yeah. was colored. Was, did you paint it or was you used different? Oh, um, um, this one yeah. was actually on a professional grade printer at the print shop. So this was printed all in color. Okay. But, yeah. So you specify the color. Uh huh. And how does it? How does that work? Does it use different plastic or? Does so it spray paint? this is a whole different printer than the fused deposition ones at um, that you saw at the library. Like the ones that you usually would see are the desktop printers. They just extrude filament. But instead, this one, um, how it prints is it just does layer by layer of this kind of dust and it on each one of those layers it uses like a inkjet type technology where it just puts down some um, some material that solidifies the dust where it lands and with that you can just do any color that you want layering it up to make a colored 3d print yeah. um, can you go back I had another question a couple slides before that
Um, so when you, when you said you designed the fourteen fifteen uh, terrain park, mm -hmm. did, did they hire you? Um, this was basically just something that started from the the ski and snowboard club that I was in, and one of the uh, coaches knew that I like designed 3D and stuff, and so uh, he um, actually got the got the job for me and um, hooked me up with those people from the Vail Park crew again and let me design that park. So it actually looked, like last season, it looked like your design? Uh, for the most part, yeah. But <laughs> cool. Uh, and anything new and exciting in next year's snow park? Um, well, no, that was just a typo. <laughs> like, oh, I, it wasn't the was 15, yeah. But, uh, um, and I know we talked about this, but how old are you? And what, what's going on in school um, right now for you? 16. And I'm just going to the Vail Ski and Snowboard Academy. And then next year, I'll be going on exchange program to Italy. And Is your 3D printer going to go with you? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you said you modded a 2D printer? Yeah. So I forgot to put in pictures of that, but um, I basically just took a 3D file that I had, sliced it up into a bunch of layers, and um, printed those layers on a clear paper so that um, when you put them on top of each other, it made a basically 3D print. Uh, Can you tell us more about the skate park? like? Um, why you would want a permanent skate park in Bay and how much it oh, yeah. cost and how long it took uh -huh. at this point. So basically with the skate park, we've had like a um, a wooden skate park in Vail for a while now and that has to be like moved around um, every winter and it's it's basically near the end of its life and so um, how this whole permanent skate park thing happened is I just got one of my mom's friends um, was actually looking at a spot in Vail for the skate park and this is like super hard to find areas in Vail because everything is being used and it's such a small town and so once he found that he asked me if it was actually possible to put a skate park there because it was so just long and skinny and there aren't really any skate parks like that. And so I just put together a design for a skate park for him and that's the one on the bottom left corner. That was my initial design that I put together just to show that it was possible to have a skate park in that space. And um, from there we just made a, the skate park committee and we brought that idea to town council with the, just with the thought that like we can make a permanent skate park, get rid of that wooden one, and just keep this year round so you wouldn't have to just waste money on moving it and all that kind of stuff. And so we finally got that approved and with a budget of 1.6 million. So, um, and we're trying to get a a uh, heated concrete system in there too, so you can use it in the winter as well. <laughs> does that fit mm. in a 1.6 million dollar budget or is that above? Um, that's gonna be above, but <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. huh. What's the height of the quarterback on the bar? Um, the, for the snow park design? Oh, uh, no, for the, the skate park you're talking about. So the bottom line. Oh, um, on the end of it? Um, well, that's just basically like there's these big walls on the side of the um, parking structure. So I just decided to put in the huge wall ride on that end just to like take advantage of that. But, mm -hmm. So when you showed the pictures of like the Xbox faceplate, is that mm -hmm. something that like you, are there like sketch up files that people share online or is it something you have to kind of like build that yourself from scratch? Um, this is actually one that I found online from Thingiverse and uh, but 
like the watch band and that art case and the skate park, those were all ones that I made on Google SketchUp. Cool. Mm -hmm. Do you ever like have like how much disconnect you have? Like you design it in SketchUp and like it's uh -huh. really gonna work, then you print it and then you're like, uh, oh it's yeah. Off. Well, that's like how I started off was basically just I had no idea how it was gonna work, so I printed it and then it would just come out just nowhere how I wanted it to be. But now I've got like a system going where I can just figure out how I want my designs to work with the 3D printer and it just turns out exactly how I want it. Like that art case that I made, that was all printed first try with no modifications. So, yeah. So definitely like some finesse, trial and error. Yeah, game. definitely. You have like uh huh. Like you have to find the tolerances and stuff, get that. Like, um, didn't know all that for your printer and everything, but... <laughs> so you also compete, or did compete as a snowboarder mm -hmm. in different places. Can you talk a little bit about that? And if 3D printing technology might help in any way with that? Um, I'm thinking, as I read an article recently about Lindsay Vaughn using virtual reality to ski courses she hadn't skied before. Oh, wow. So if you could, like, <laughs> get a printout of a park, uh -huh. you know, like, in... Salt Lake City, let's say, that you've never been to and like visualize your runs or something. Like okay. That. Well, my experience with snowboarding is I um, did competitive snowboarding like for the past few years, but um, like I did the European Open last year, got second in the Junior Jam category, and then uh, I competed against the guy who won the Olympics and like that was that was just like a super fun experience for me and snowboarding was a huge part of my life but um so i i definitely think 3d printing can be a part of the snowboarding industry not really in a virtual reality kind of way though i feel like you could print like parts to your like equipment and stuff yeah i was thinking about printing some bindings for my snowboard but um i haven't gotten around to that yet but Definitely think it could be helpful for that. Awesome. Yeah. What if you wanted to do like a fly through to your, your park there, your skate park? You oh yeah. You could do that. Uh huh. You could do that as well. Just like if you have any um, park designs that you want to um, that you want to sell to somebody, like f for um, a park that you want to be made, you can just make a fly through and. Uh, just give them a better visual of it, I guess. And is the skate park going to be free? Is yeah. Uh-huh. Completely free. <laughs> have you ever been to the Denver skate park? Yeah, I have. Uh-huh. How does it compare in size to that? It's a lot bigger. The Denver? Yeah, that one is, that one's pretty big. And this one is, like this one's probably from this wall to that wall in width and just super long. But. Mm. Is there an advantage for it being long and skinny versus? Well, actually, yeah, there is. Um, like for the long and skinny part that we're dealing with, there's a lot more just um, direct lines back and forth through the park. So there's no like crossing lines with the skaters and nobody gets like, uh, no one crashes into each other or anything. But that's like a problem I've seen with the Denver skate park because it's, it has that just giant square shape. And then like the, in one section of the park, it all funnels down into one little feature. And so when everyone goes down into that feature, they all just have to like dodge each other not to just get annihilated. But like with the um, park that we're dealing with in Vail, it's just long and skinny, so you just get basically just like two or three lines back and forth and so there's no um, uh, collisions. And you said construction starting soon and how long yeah. will it take? When will it be ready? Um, it's going to take two months approximately. So it's supposed to start August 1st but um, should start in the next few days. But, uh -huh. Are you going to be there for the, like is there a ceremonial? I'm um, actually, well, I don't know if there's <laughs> I don't know if there's going to be a ceremony for the groundbreaking but um there's I definitely want to be there 
And there's going to be a ceremony for the opening too when it's actually done and built. But I'm not going to be there for that because I'm going to be in Italy. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's, that's about it. All right. We got some uh, speaker gifts for you. Oh, sweet. Uh, for making the trip here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, to a set of Google Doodle stickers. Oh, that's cool. Put on a laptop or whatever. You just uh, <laughs> keep as a memento. This is Google Cardboard. Have you heard of this? Uh uh. It's a virtual reality. It's kind of, have you ever heard of Oculus Rift? Yeah. It's like Oculus Rift, but much less expensive. Uh. <laughs> you put your phone in it and you hold it up to your face and look around. Oh, that's pretty it. cool. It's, it's really Yeah, cool. thanks. Uh, large t shirt. Special oh, sweet. Uh, Google I.O. is the annual uh, Google Developer Conference uh -huh. every year. And so we make a Colorado themed uh, version okay. of that logo every year. Yeah. That. Thank you. And then these are for your driver. We had every March we have a uh, women tech makers event, and we had a special wine tasting event. So we have some surplus wine, <laughs> uh, not to be had before you drive. <laughs> Enjoy it in the future. Uh, and that's it. Cool. Yeah, thank you so much. Ah, <laughs> uh, not Twitter. Yeah, I have like an Instagram though. Uh -huh. What's your 